Yeah. I've got to say, it doesn't say two o'clock yet on my screen. <laughs> okay. Real soon. Just look up as you, as you get ready. You know? yeah, yeah, I know, I'm into it. Call your dog. <laughs> My kitchen come on in it's rather a nasty well the sun's shining now but a very very blustery day the winds were howling during the night it was quite reminiscent of my childhood living by the coast and the waves crashing on the shingles and the wind the howling and um, so it's a nice day to do what we're doing today we're going to be making uh, Irish mac and cheese and uh, orange and chocolate muffins. Now, the Irish mac and cheese, uh, I lived in Ireland for a while, and we'll talk about the Irish cheese later, but it is rather special. And you can tell when you've got it in a, in a split dish and when you haven't, and this is using three different cheeses, and it really, probably not the lightest of meals, but really, really tasty. So to begin with, we're going to make the uh, chocolate uh, and orange uh, muffins, but I've just got to go to the back of the stove and put the macaroni in to start to cook. So the water's boiling. And that is hot. And I'm making half the mixture of the macaroni cheese because there are only two of us and uh, I don't want to waste it. So I'm making just enough for supper. So this is the nice thing about these recipes is you can halve them, you can double them, you can triple them, and they work just fine. So I'm going to turn the heat up under there. I'm leaving the top off because I have a nasty habit, as I've said before, of boiling pasta water over. And Derek spent hours yesterday cleaning my stove. And he'll kill me if the water boils over. So bear with me. I might have to come back and just check it just to make sure that it's not boiling over. So let's go back to the butcher block. And um, these are, you can eat these muffins for breakfast. Being, I've never quite got used to the North American habit of eating cake what I call cake for breakfast. But these aren't too sweet. They're quite, uh, they've got whole wheat flour in and they've got orange. So you can eat them as a breakfast muffin or I like them as a dessert. So let's just put everything on the table. And that's the orange juice, which smells absolutely fabulous. So in here, I've got white flour, whole wheat flour, the baking powder and the baking soda. And we need to mix those up together. Now, careful as you do that, because as you can see, it can plump right over you. I did that yesterday. I was showing uh, some ladies how to um, make, um, what was I doing? Oh, I was showing some ladies how to make uh, uh, it was pumpkin and chocolate cookies. And I was doing this with the flour and woof all over me. And as somebody said, you don't need a, a Halloween costume. So in here, there's cocoa powder and sugar. Now you need proper cocoa powder. Don't use, don't be tempted to use um, 
drinking chocolate, it doesn't have the same flavour. In fact, drink, drinking chocolate, it really is cocoa powder with, with sugar and a lightener in it. So let's just mix those up together like that. And we're going to add those into there. I'm going to just put that on one side. So we want to mix these up together like that. And so let's just check our list of ingredients. So we've got the flour, the wheat flour, the baking soda, baking powder, all in there, white sugar, cocoa, milk, one beaten egg, there, orange zest, and orange juice, and, and um, chocolate chips, and cooking oil. Now, for the cooking oil, today I'm using grapeseed oil, but you can use, um, I wouldn't use an olive oil, it has too much of a taste to it. You can use a sunflower oil, um, a canola oil, vegetable oil, but one oil which is extremely good uh, for mixing with cakes, and that's an avocado oil. It's beautiful. It has a nice creamy flavour. I didn't have any avocado oil in today, so I'm using the um, I'm using the grapeseed oil. Now we just need to. I'm just going to get a whisk. Excuse me. I'm going to the back. There we are. We need to put the milk in there. Now, when I came to Canada, I could not make muffins. Because I was used, I was used to making sponge cakes, cupcakes, and so you have to make sure everything's nice and fluffy, and um, and really, really well blended. And I, I really couldn't make, um, I couldn't make a, a muffin to save my life. And I went to manage a little bistro in a, a retail store. And the owner said, well, of course, you'll have to make muffins for breakfast for the staff. I said, what? I said, I'm not doing it. I can't make muffins. And he said, you've got to. You know, they, they come in and they want breakfast. They want muffins. So I had to give myself a crash course on making muffins. And the secret is don't overblend. So we've got an egg here, which is beaten, which is going in there. I'm going to just add the orange juice to the oil so that it's nicely blended. So we really just need to moisten all the ingredients. Just make sure that all the flour is covered. These are semi-sweet chocolate chips and that is all there is to making the muffins. Now, um, with the orange juice, it, you should really use the orange, orange peel, uh, but uh, when you've peeled your, when you've grated your orange, use the, the juice and the orange, but sometimes I find it's not really orangey enough. So I cheat sometimes and I use some orange juice um, without the pulp and that really brings out the flavour of the chocolate and that's what I've done today. So this should make about 24. So let's have a look. I've got the oven on at 350. It depends how big you make the muffins, obviously. And you can make this, oh, there we are. You can make this into mini muffins. So you can uh, actually, it's, you can control the amount of sugar and carbohydrates that you're eating but they're no good if you've got a family of teenagers or growing children 
they'll just eat, eat them and not even notice that they've eaten one. So I was um, trained, we were trained um, in haute cuisine, French cooking, but our senior lecturer, she was a little Yorkshire lady. She came up to about my shoulder. And in those days, it was very unusual to have, oh, I made a mess there, to have a female senior chef. And she had, her husband was a university lecturer and he'd suffered a stroke very early in the marriage and they had twin boys. So it was left to her, I'm going to fill these up so we've just got 12. So it was left to, up to her to earn a living. And we used to do beautifully decorated little cakes. And I can remember her saying one day, hey lass, she said, because she was broad Yorkshire. She said, that's great. You do this when, you, when you're showing people how to cook, but you won't do this at home when you've got children. You'll use a, a roasting tin. You'll make the in the largest amount possible and you'll cut them into great big slabs and because she said if you've got boys it's like they've got taps on the toes that don't turn off and I always remember it and it was so true when the kids were growing up forget the dainty little muffins or cupcakes or sponge cake bake it in a, a large tin cut it into slabs and just feed them they they never seem to be full so there we are we're going to clean that up because that will get baked on let's just um i hate having to do this it's going to make a lovely mess there we are just make sure that it's clean wash your hands and we're going to put those in for about 15 minutes so let's see what time it is it's yeah there we are so that's the muffins. So now to the um, to cook the uh, macaroni cheese. I'm going to give this a stir. It needs it sticking on the bottom just a little bit. Come on. Ah, oh, I made a mess. Sorry, Derek. I've made a mess. Bang. Bang. Yeah. Shoot me dead. Yeah, oh well, such is life, especially with me and cooking. Uh, so in here, I've got butter. You can use margarine, you can use oil, but butter just gives it that little bit of something. An onion, and this is very, very finely chopped. I want to cook that until it's just translucent and I'm going to cook it just with a pinch of sugar and you'll probably say huh, why is she putting sugar in there she's a diabetic she doesn't need the sugar the sugar just a little pinch of sugar brings out the sweetness in the onion so that's all that it takes to bring out the sweetness of the onion I'm just going to get my sheet. I tend to do these things without even thinking. And then I look and think, oh yes, I've left that out. Um, you can put a little mustard in this at this stage if you like. If you like something just a little bit, um, a little bit more savoury. But with having the different cheeses, it really is nice and savoury. Don't, I'm not going to salt this until I've put all the cheese in. 
because the cheese, especially with the Irish cheese, it's a little bit more salty than the Canadian cheese. So we've in this, I'll just tell you the cheeses that we've got. Uh, I've got grated cheddar, an old, an old fork cheddar, um, an aged cheddar. I'm going to move this over to there. It's not cooking quite as fast as I would like. So we've got an aged cheddar. We've got some Swiss cheese, which adds a nice dry flavour to it. And the Irish cheese. So there we are. That is just, you see, it's cooked so, it's cut so finely, it hardly takes any time to cook. And I've got flour here. I've got some extra flour just in case it doesn't thicken up as much as I like. So this is called making a roux. You've seen me do this many times before. Now we want the flour to form a paste like that and I'm going to cook it, what's called cook it out, just for a couple of minutes so that the flour cooks. Uh, we don't want to brown it, we, we're not looking for a brown sauce, we're looking for a white sauce, so we don't want any browning. But if we don't cook it like this, it tastes raw, very, very raw. You can tell when a... Um, if you've gone into a restaurant and they make their own sauces, you can tell if they've not co cooked it out, it tastes really, really raw. Now, I've got milk here, which I've had a bay leaf soaking in the milk, but we'll put the, put the milk in. Add about a third at a time. And we want to bring this up to the boil. Don't worry if it goes a little bit lumpy, it'll come out. It's just the starch grains bursting. I'm going to actually add my spices at this stage because I like to make a nice, um, a nice spicy sauce. So I've got uh, nutmeg and cloves. I think fall is the t fall and winter is perfect timing for nutmeg and cloves. A little more milk. You can't hurry this. It has to cook gently. I'm just going to stir that. This pot has decided to start to stick at the bottom for some unknown reason. I better give it a good oiling. There we are. It's coming up to the boil. Now, uh, we're going to put, we've got some breadcrumbs here. Um, that is just one one slice of bread and it was the crust and for the herbs for the top I've got um, what did I put in uh, I've got some thyme and, ch and chives and a little pepper we're going to, uh, a little um, parsley not pepper some dried at this time of the year I've had to bring my herbs in there we are that's thickening we want to bring this up to the boil before we add the last of the milk. There we are. And we're going to add um, the cream. For this, you need a 35% cream because you're going to, you're cooking it. And the, anything less than the 35 will separate. So that, if you look, watching in England, that, that's a double cream, or also known as a heavy cream. Here in Canada, it's a 35% cream. Unless you're watching from Quebec, 
and they have a beautiful 10% cream which you can cook with. Uh, they do a process on it, but we can't get it here in Ontario, unfortunately. Now, you can see, I'm just going to lift this up so you can see the sauce. It's beautifully nice and flavorful. Um, right, the cream. If you're going to be really, really decadent, you could put a drop of, red, uh, a drop of white wine in there. If you've got some at the bottom of the, of the bottle, it won't hurt. There we are. I just want to cook. I'm going to taste that. I'm going to take that bay leaf out before I put anything else in. Otherwise, I will forget and we'll be serving it with bay leaf. Now, let me just turn that down. Before we do anything else, I'm going to taste that just to make sure that it's cooked out correctly. Mmm. Oh, that. Oh, my gosh. And it doesn't even have any cheese in it. I'm going to switch that off. Because in here, I've got three different cheeses. I've got the, the Swiss, the Irish, the cheddar, all mixed together. But cheese is protein. And, the, and the, it can harden if it's boiled and cooked. So we switch the heat off. There's enough heat in the pan to um, just to soften and, de and melt the cheese. Now, this is where we've got to do a little bit of, um, just a little bit of uh, seasoning once we put this in. I'm going to add a drop more milk to this because it is, by the time we've got the macaroni in there, I think it might be just a little bit thick. Let me just taste that. I've got some cheese here for the top. I'm going to put some of that in as well. It's not quite as cheesy as I would like it to be. There we are. That's fine. Because the cheese for the top is just to brown. The macaroni is almost cooked. Just let me get a drop of milk. I only need a drop. Where's the end? There we are. Just want to bring it down a little bit, otherwise it's going to be too thick over the macaroni. And again, I've used, I've used an Irish recipe. And so, again, the flour in Ireland doesn't take as much liquid as the Canadian flour. It's a harder flour. So you might just have to adjust just a little bit and we'll taste that. I think it will need a little bit more salt and pepper. Mmm, that's better. The sharpness of the Irish cheese, it really stands out. A little salt and pepper. This is my mixture. Don't forget, three parts salt, one part pepper. I'm running out of spoons. There we are. That is really nice. It's cheesy, not over cheesy. It doesn't bite your throat. So I'm just going to leave that there. Let's have a look and see how these look cooked. They only take about six minutes to cook the macaroni. I will just check it though, just in case. Ah, it's hot. <laughs> mm. Oh well. That is cooked. We can turn that off because it will still still keep cupping, cooking, cooking. Let's just 
clean some of the mess up because we need to strain the macaroni and combine the macaroni with the cheese sauce. So I'm going to come back over to the table, Derek. There we are. Let's strain the macaroni. Oh. We don't want to waste any. There we are. Let that just sit and strain. Hi, Kate. Hi, Lou. They're my daughters. One's in England and one's over here in Canada. Hi. The, the sauce. We're a scattered family. Uh, we have, I have children in, uh, my son's in Chile, my daughter with her grandchildren and children are in England. Uh, my daughter's over here with her children in Canada. So we're somewhat scattered. An international family, I think you call it. So, breadcrumbs. Cheese. And I'm going to look in the oven because I haven't got a clock and I didn't put the timer on. So let's just see how these are cooking. Oh, yes. Just a few more minutes, which is good. So I've got a bowl here. Now, normally I would, um, I would put this mix it all together in the same pan as I've cooked the macaroni. Um, excuse me, unless I was serving it for guests. It saves washing up, but today I'll show you how it's done correctly. But uh, So we put the macaroni in there. We get rid of that, which is extremely hot. So we'll put that on the back of the stove. There we are. We'll get rid of that. We're going to add the cheese sauce to that. So I need a spatula. We don't want to waste anything. So just scrape out like that we don't want to there we are and we're going to combine the spaghetti uh, the macaroni like that make sure that all the macaroni is covered and now which dish should I use um, let's use that one Use an oven, uh, one that uh, a dish that can go in the, uh, either a casserole or a dish like that that can go back into the oven under the broiler. Again, use your spatula to get everything out. Just push it to the edge like that. That looks good. And now I have my cheese and my breadcrumbs. And so, mm, and wash my hands. There we are. So we need to just put the herbs in with the breadcrumbs. We, it's, there's not a lot of breadcrumbs here for the, but it just adds a little crisp, crispness. Now, if you're not using fresh breadcrumbs, I just put this in a food processor and I, it was some stale bread that I had. 
use panko breadcrumbs. Uh, they've, um, they're nice, they're dry, and so panko would go well on here. But as I say, this is just one crust of bread. It was the end of a, a loaf of bread. And the, so now just make sure that you keep the edge clean. And we're going to sprinkle this with the Irish cheese. Like that. And that's going to go under a broiler until it's browned. Now I'm going to see if the if the muffins are cooked, and if they are, I'll put the broiler on, on the oven. If they're not, you're going to excuse me because I'm going to use my little toasty oven. Whatever you have around the edge is going to catch and it's going to bake. So just make sure that it's clean. And we need to have something out like that so that um, we've got it's going to be hot when it comes out let's have a look at the let's have a look at the muffins I think they might need another minute or two I don't know instinct tells me but let's have a look ah There they are, lovely, they're cooked. So we can put the broiler on the oven. So let's, uh, where's broil? So let's cancel. I haven't got my glasses on, broil. There we are. And so that won't take many minutes to heat up. And whilst it's heating up, we can put the, it's not going to hurt just to put this in, just whilst it's heating up. There we are. So lovely. We've got the muffins. There we are. And I'm going to put, woohoo, they're really nice muffins. Should we cut one open and have a look, see what it looks like inside? They're a little bit hot, so it's hardly fair because they're going to... Um, they're going to clog on me, but uh, let's have a look. We'll put these back over the top of the stove, out of the way. So let's open one up and have a look inside. You can see the steaming. I'm doing the unforgivable actually. I'm cutting a cake that is really, really hot with uh, with a knife. Hi, Bob. <laughs> She's uh, she loves Irish cheese, Bob. She's a, a very good friend of mine from uh, from. Kingston and we don't actually get around to seeing each other very often. We're only about an hour and a half away and you would think it was a million miles. So we've made a pack that we are actually going to see each other before Christmas comes. Let's hope it's before the snow comes. So look, that is the texture of the muffin. So that's nice, a nice moist muffin. Now if you are gluten free then use, um, use a gluten free flour and that applies to the macaroni cheese. If you're gluten free um, then use a, 
a gluten-free flour for the sauce. It works extremely well. There's some really, I used to do a lot of gluten-free cooking and I used to make up all my own gluten-free flour, which was a bit of a pain in the butt. But there's some really, really good gluten-free flours on the market now uh, that you can use just like an ordinary flour. They've got everything in there. You don't have to add anything. So if you, are, if you have a gluten intolerance, by all means, use some gluten-free. Let's have a look and see how the mac and cheese is doing. It's bubbling nicely, not quite ready. So whilst, whoa, I think that was well caught, don't you? So whilst that's, um, whilst that's cooking, let's just do, it looks a little bit sad on the table. Um, it's, I like to put a little bit of colour with it, so let's just pick out some parsley. A little bit of parsley. Some red pepper. Let's take out the pith of the red pepper. And... We get rid of that. We don't need that. That can go over there. I can use that in soup. So what we're going to do is just make, um, just cut some diamonds like that with the, with the pepper. You see, it's just a little diamond shape and it adds a bit of interest to the top of the of the dish so you just have a strip and you cut on an angle like that so we'll just do another one like that and we'll Put a little tomato on there. Put that with that. All these can be used in soup, all the little bits that are left over. Tomato walls looks good. There we are. We'll put that over there. So that's just a little bit for decoration. I can smell the macaroni cheese. <coughs> My nose didn't abandon me. Let's just switch off the broiler. Now that is very hot. So I'm going to put it on a board. Believe it or not, this is my mother's uh, breadboard. Uh, I'm 76. She was married 10 years before they adopted me. So this is 86 years old. And it's used daily. So I hope I look as good as that in 10 years time. I have my doubts, but uh, there we are. So what should we do first? Let's put a little bit of... Now, when you're putting your tomato on, make sure that the, you, it all goes the same way. Some... A little bit of the peppers. Like that. A little bit of pepper there. You can put a little... Sprinkle a little paprika on the top. That will give it some colour. I need another one in there and one more round there and just a little bit of parsley for some greenery so that it looks, looks nice. Whoa, my fingers is clinging to the parsley. 
Here we are. I miss, I miss my parsley. I miss my herbs at this time of the year. I'm trying to grow them in the mudroom, but I, I've never been very successful. So there we are. There's the Irish mac and cheese. We'll just clean up the mess. Oh, sorry. Just let me press that off. There we are. There we are. Sorry about that. There we are. And so this is the mac and cheese. You can probably hear the hounds of the Baskervilles upstairs. The the Sukhoin did a room and uh, when the phone goes they start to howl and we've got one that's decided to howl as well. The joys of live television. I, I've unplugged it upstairs and it still seems to go. I don't know what I don't really know how to unplug it. So I'm sorry about that, but there you are. That's the mac and cheese, the Irish mac and cheese. So that is supper. Uh, served with some nice crisp bread or some uh, wholemeal bread, homemade wholemeal bread. And please enjoy. Now, don't forget to visit our website, mrscalabashcooks.com. And uh, you'll see... Uh, You'll see some uh, more information on there. There is a page where you can subscribe to the program or donate. Uh, all donations are gratefully received, uh, no matter how small. And also the fact that uh, you can subscribe five dollars a month, or for twelve dollars, I would do a, I would do a show with your name on it. I would do a show just with your name. So if, if it was uh, uh, Derek Smith, the show would be Derek Smith's show. And you could, uh, you could decide uh, which recipes that you wanted me to, uh, wanted, me to, um, wanted me to show on the show. So please, I apologize for this. The wretched thing, I don't know how to stop it. There. I, I have no idea. I keep press, pressing off and it keeps coming on. Uh, it, they're very, uh, very persistent. Uh, it's, I know it's a, a robocall, so I can tell by the number. But I apologise for that. But please go to the website, have a look. Um, also, on a Tuesday evening, we're having a, an informal chat. It's a round-the-table chat. And I've got uh, some people which I'm bringing in. Hopefully next week, um, yes, next week, it is next week, it will be a gentleman from the Chamber of Commerce here in Merrickville. And he's going to tell us about um, Christmas in Merrickville. And that's a big, big day. We have a Santa Claus parade. The week after that, I've got Connie coming in. And she's a psychic, a friend of mine. And she's a really, really good psychic. So if you've got any questions, just think about them. You can type them up on the comments and we can answer them. Or Connie can answer them. Excuse me, I won't be answering. I'll tell you how good Connie is. Um, I lost my agenda. When Derek was in the hospital, uh, when he broke his ribs, I thought I'd left it in the emergency room. No, they couldn't find it. I searched my car. I searched Derek's car. I searched the closet. I searched everywhere. I even went out and bought a 2020 agenda. So I'd got something to look at, some dates. I was talking to Connie the other day uh, on the phone. And I said, hang on a minute. I've just got to get an agenda. And I explained. And she said, you've got a dark car. You've got a black car. I said, no. She said, it's dark. I said, yes, it's dark green. And she said, look at the passenger side. I said, well, I don't think so. I've looked there. Anyway, after the conversation, I went out and I looked on the front passenger side because it couldn't fall out of my handbag. No, there was nothing. So I thought I'd go round to the back door and kneel down and look. And there was the agenda caught between a rubber mat 
and under the seat. So that's uh, that's a week uh, a week this Tuesday. So please have your questions waiting for her. We're going to sit around the table, have a few munches, a cup of coffee, maybe a glass of wine, and we can answer your questions. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and please have a safe and enjoyable week. And I will see you for the chat show on Tuesday. Bye. Bye, Jabor. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Live your life for 20 bucks. Think I'm saying. Go there, saying. And the same thing as from time. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Think I'm saying.